In section 4.1, we begin our exploration of vector spaces and subspaces. So we want to note that up until now, we've solely been working in the real numbers, or red. So from this point forward, we're going to start to look at slightly more abstract spaces. So to get us started, we want to think about the properties or the axioms of a vector space. So we have that a vector space is a collection of vectors v and two operators, addition and scalar multiplication, such that this set of vectors satisfies the following 10 axioms. So these axioms are for all vectors u, v, and w in the vector space v, and for all scalars c and d in r, with a set of real numbers. So the first one is that vector u plus vector v must be an element of the vector space. Number two, vector u plus vector v is equal to vector v plus vector u. Number three, if we take the sum of vector u and vector v and then add vector w, this should be equivalent to vector u plus the sum of vector v plus vector w. Number four, for the zero vector in our vector space, the zero vector plus vector u must be equal to vector u. Number five, for all vector u in the vector space v, vector u plus negative vector u is equal to the zero vector. And these first five here are the addition rules. The most important addition rule that we have here is number one. Right, where as long as we can show that this holds true, then the others will follow suit. We also want to make special note of number four. Right, we want to be able to show that our zero vector is in that vector space. So then six through ten are the scalar multiplication rules. Number six, the most important one, is the scalar c multiplied by vector u should be in the vector space. We then have scalar c multiplied by the sum of vector u and vector v is equal to the sum of these scalar multiples. Number eight, if we have the sum of scalar multiples multiplied by vector u, that should be equivalent to scalar c times vector u plus scalar d times vector u. Number nine, if we have the scalar multiple of a scalar multiple, that's equal to the scalar multiple d multiplied by the scalar multiple c of vector u, or we could take the product of our scalar multiples first and then multiply it by the vector. And last but not least, if we multiply vector u by scalar 1, we should end up with vector u. And again, these 6 through 10 are the scalar multiple rules, and the most important rule here is number 6. As long as we can show 6 is holding true, then the rest will follow suit. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples.